Hello. Hello world. Frida Riva Darcy and Patricia O'Connor here. And today I've let the lights drop. I mean, I've let them go off, not drop, but I've let the lights go off. And I want to do a little talk today about Yamadori. What's the story behind the Yamadori? Oddly enough, when I first got into bonsai years and years and years ago, we didn't have computers. I'm not saying my family didn't, I'm saying nobody. They weren't, they were experimental at that point. No internet, none of that stuff. Uh, we had like three channels of television, yay us. And um, when it came to learning about bonsai, I had access to a few books not many and when i say a few i mean maybe four and i picked through them picked out the parts that i found interesting and read those and i also came away with a few misconceptions i actually for one thing just off topic i guess but whenever we do the thing with the uh, chopsticks where we poke the soil down into the pots to make sure that it fills all the gaps I did actually think that people were packing the roots down into soil, which is a big no. I had derived that by reading the books and seeing the pictures, and, and I had just come away with that misconception. Another thing was I didn't really understand that there was such a thing as Yamadori. I think I explained on a, a video just a, a few weeks ago how my grandmother once gave me a piece of mesquite driftwood long dead to this world. And I remember thinking, I wonder if that could have in some way been a bonsai had it uh, been acquired while alive. And the answer to that was, yeah, it just shows, it just shows that uh, even with those experiences of those few books and references, I came away with no, no uh, knowledge of Yamadori whatsoever. Even though I was going out on the family land, we had like rural Southeast Texas property, and I could go out there and find uh, little oaks or little pine trees or little yopon trees. Uh, yeah, like holly with the uh, little red berries and stuff like that. Those were everywhere, and, uh, and it was really easy just to bend them into shapes and stuff and do all kind of... And that was what I practiced on, and that was my introduction to bonsai. But I didn't really think about it in Yamadori, which isn't accurate enough because it was a Yamadori. Yamadori needs to come, I think, from the mountains to be accurate. And um, to that end, my two examples of Yamadori did. They came, they came from the from the mountains, high elevation. These were both high elevation trees. This one was said to be 25 years old. This one was said to be 175 years old, which is very specific. Uh, you know, when it comes time to judge the age of a tree, it might be uh, like this tree was planted from seed and the person that I got it from knew how long they had grown it. So uh, it was 17 years from seed as of last summer when I acquired this tree. So we know when it was, when it was born. Other trees, uh, we surmise their age because if the bark goes up the trunk, it's, if it has bark, it's this number. If it goes all the way up the trunk, it's another number. If there's bark on the limbs, that's a, a, another indication of an older age. If the bark goes all the way down the limbs, that's a further indication of age and based on that, that would be a 75 year old Japanese black pine. But how do you, how would you know that this is a, a 175 year old Ponderosa? Well, count the rings. Normally, uh, in order to count the rings on a tree, that's kind of post-mortem. You, <laughs> you usually go up to a tree stump and see how many rings the tree had before it was before it met its whatever demise. Um, but in this case, if you, the more I've uh, come to know about bonsai, I would say that it's very, very likely that the collector of this tree had some say over its height, 
how tall it was. And they also had some say, uh, or, they, or they were able, they had a way that they would know how many years old this tree was. Um, and both of those things are actually slightly connected. But to go back, at this apartment complex, we have, as you can see in the background, we have numerous pine trees, but we also have a few uh, valley oaks or water oaks on the property. And to that end, whenever, they, uh, whenever the squirrels plant them and they come popping up, a lot of times they don't last long because they don't fit in with the, uh, with the beds around here. And when they pop up, um, they get weed eated or when the landscapers prune back all the uh, beds every fall, they get weed eated then along with all the, uh, with all the summer stuff that gets cut back. So, you know, as far as taking things out of the wall, there isn't really, it, there isn't really a sense of taking something that doesn't uh, belong. Um, it's kind of like pulling weeds and taking them home and trying to make pets out of them in, in another aspect. You know, also we're not taking something that's, that's the, you know, community has invested years, years in. This tree, um, its community had invested years in it. Um, it was collected, it and the one next to it, this one, are both ponderosas. They were both collected by a professional collector. They both came from uh, the vicinity that uh, the collector lives in. In other words, when he collected these trees, he likely didn't bring them too far to bring them home. Uh, he lived in that community. They, for all I know, might have been collected on his land, but he is a known collector, so we know that he would have collected with permit or with landowners, landowners' permission. Now, the other thing is, it goes back to uh, my early days and seeing, um, and seeing the few books that I was, you know, didn't learn enough about Yamadori in the early going. But since I came back to it and I came back to YouTube, there are hundreds and hundreds of videos dedicated to Yamadori. If it grows out in the wild and can be had in any uh, numbers whatsoever, people will have made videos about going out and collecting Yamadori. And those videos, do I think that they can in some way hurt Bonsai's reputation? I do. I do think that. Do I think that's deserved? Sometimes and not always. Um, there are some people who are in the business of doing bonsai and they have a reputation for doing excellent work and um, keeping trees alive and they may have gotten their start doing uh, some beautiful Yamadori work. Well, quite often the trees that they collect will be a part of uh, bigger exhibits from then on. Their, uh, ratio of trees that survive being is high so uh and their ratio for collecting a tree and then learning a little bit about bonsai and discovering that it had some obvious flaws they uh, are probably not likely going to dig up a lot of things that they can't turn into something just really fantastic you know a lot of times we um, see something that has an enormous amount of age on it and we think about how we can't just buy that for love of money. But on the other hand, uh, nature doesn't care what the taper is. Nature doesn't care about a lot of the other things. And sometimes once we uh, have lived with them a while, we realize that they have some in inherent flaws that um, when we know better, we have to still like those because we've collected that from the wild and uh, we collected it flaws and all. And uh, to some extent, when you're looking at Yamadori material that's got some age and maturity to it, you let go of some of its flaws because it didn't have those years of training, but it is a professional Yamadori in every sense of the word. So, um, 
trees that are trees that have been uh, cultivated can uh, be cared for for a longer you know a 35 year old tree bought at a nursery will have been cared for for 35 years and um, that that should cost a little bit of money but you could still get them relatively cheap now having said that most of my teachers even those who have collected are very respectful their parents they have uh, you know that they're caring people they uh, they approach things with a certain amount of uh, respect respect for the material respect for the land respect for the hobby respect for the art form and respect for a living thing and I think if you project all of those things and you give unto yourself then Yamadori should not be out of reach for you. I was uh, a little put off in the early goings because when I wanted to learn more about these guys, I kept running across videos of people whose idea of Yamadori was going out with their guns and their saws and going out into the wetlands and just, you know, having their way with it. I always, if the place looked just fine two weeks later, I still always was a little put off by that. And I see that the same way that I saw all of those old black and white photos of things that people have wasted in the past, be they uh, animals or be they forest or be they redwood trees that everybody would would take weeks to uh, chop down because they were so enormous and then have their pictures taken around it like they had done something. That is probably not gonna do Yamadori and or Bonsai a lot of good to feel that way. But for all of that that we see, we have to look beyond that. For everybody who starves a tree to try to get it to be small, there's someone else who allows a tree to flourish and be itself and has learned ways to make sure that it stays beautiful. Uh, in that way, I want to learn more and more about bonsai. And to those people who um, know how to adequately collect trees, um, I think there should always be room for them and for those of us who were just getting into bonsai, it is really easy to let your emotions get the better of you. Bonsai, I, I always joke that bonsai, uh, I got bonsai re-addicted. And you very much do. Just walking, just walking my pup, who by the way, yesterday marks one year for uh, Frida and I. Um, it's been a fantastic year. I'm really lucky to have her as a um, as a little as a little sidekick. She's really something. But anyway, back to our trees. This guy, this guy was collected in Deadwood, South Dakota. The collector is a professional bonsai tree collector. He is also in Deadwood, South Dakota. Did he collect this on his own land? Might be. Don't know. Uh, however, he probably didn't have to drive very far to bring it home. He said on the sales brochure that I bought, not the sales brochure, but the ad page that I was looking at on the internet, he listed what month this tree was cultivated. He did not say what year. That's, that's a little side note. That doesn't matter to me, but that is a little side note. Uh, so let's say you lived in Deadwood, South Dakota, and you had a comfortable little house, and maybe uh, it was on the side of a mountain. Anything growing on your yard is Yamadori because that would be mountain grown. If you planted it there and let it uh, in, in your yard the way people tend to do, that would still be yarded, uh, Yamadori, not Yardadori. It would still be Yamadori in a couple of years. At 175 years old, I don't think he planted this one. He did also say on the ad, he gave a reference to the exact measurement off the ground on this height. 
that really doesn't necessarily mean anything any more than I can put a tape measure on there and tell you the exact measurement of that height. But I thought at the time that that probably kind of made reference to he had some say as to how high this is. If you were to take from here to the end of the tree, that's probably, let's say, well, I don't know. Let's say that's a foot and from there to the end is another foot. And this is one, two, three, four feet, right? And then there's two feet going that way. So if this were to go from here and go straight up like that over in keeping with the same direction that it was, you would have about a six foot tall tree, which would uh, be a little less literati to my way of thinking, but I think my collector put a wedge cut. I think I'm showing you. Put a wedge cut right here. And with that wedge cut, he was able to take the trunk that would have been going that way and then drop it straight down in a wedge cut. You can, uh, a lot of you already know what I mean. If you don't know what I mean by a wedge cut, there are some Bonsai Mirai videos on YouTube in the free stuff where he has done some uh, Bonsai Club demonstrations where he has performed the wedge cut. It's basically how you change the direction of a trunk that is too heavy to put a bend in. So you cut a wedge, uh, you cut a wedge shape out of it leaving a very, very, very scary thin amount of living tissue on the outside edge of the cut. And then you fold that down. And, uh, and if you make good contact, if both cut edges make good contact to one another, that edge will heal over and all of that living tissue around those cuts will resume. And that's how you would, uh, if nature didn't do that, that's how, as a bonsai master, you would do that. Also, that would leave you with a wedge of wood that would allow you to count the rings so that you would then know how old this tree is if you were uh, looking to do all of that. So, uh, what's the point to this, Patricia? Well, the point is that's how you would know how old this bonsai tree is if you were going to uh, sell this bonsai tree and tell people that it was 175 years old. That would be one way that you would actually know how old your tree is. But also as a piece of Yamadori uh, literati that I think is absolutely beautiful. I don't have a styling change in mind one for this tree except to um, do everything that I can do to maintain its current state of beauty. So do I think that um, the, the uh, bonsai collector that I bought this tree from found this tree like this growing on the side of a rock in Deadwood, South Dakota? No, I think he found this tree. It was about six feet tall. It probably had, it was probably had that little side branch coming off of it. Probably had that side branch coming off of it. And um, he made a bonsai trees because bonsai trees in the end, they're made. Um, they are, they're made, not grown. They're also grown, but more so to be, you know, so are topiaries are grown, but to be a bonsai tree, you make it a bonsai tree. And um, so as a collected tree, maybe this was growing on his property. So a couple of years ago, he started wiring it. Maybe he put the chop in it and then he collected it and then a year later, he put it on the market and sold it. Or maybe he collected it five years ago and this is the result of the work five years later. And then Patricia comes along and goes, yes, yes, I love that. Uh, take my money. So um, to me, this was uh, Yamadori done by conscientious people who uh, know how to do, who know how to collect trees, who know how to bring trees home without uh, killing them. And um, 
he certainly wanted to know whether or not uh, I had the wherewithal to uh, keep this tree, uh, both of them, alive. And um, I was kind of glad about that. It wasn't like, yeah, I send the check to here. Who are you? Uh, he really wanted, he was kind of curious as to where I lived and um, was kind of feeding the fuel of my concern about this uh, neck of the woods um, being a good territory. He was unsure because he lives in the heart of where they come from and was wondering about my way. So I had to do my own research and I had to talk to some more locals, but um, some of the people that I knew let him know that I did at least have access to dis decent information. So, you know, that's what I go back to. This was a conscientious person who uh, collected trees and, and wants to see their continued success and health and vigor and all that good stuff, as opposed to people who just go out and, um, well, kind of spray and pray. You just kind of just take a bunch of stuff and see what lives. Uh, I don't really think, I think in this day and age, we're going to lose, we're going to lose a lot over uh, global warming and stuff. We don't need to be um, getting all grab happy over uh, everything that's growing out in the wild necessarily. Um, like I said, the little, the little seedling things that come up that are about to be cut down by the, uh, lawnmowers aren't aren't necessarily what i'm talking about but the aging things that when you go on that vacation or something and you're ill prepared but you see something and you've just gotten into bonsai over the last month or so don't take that maybe it's a good idea but you're not ready you know so yeah um yamadori that's my story uh thank you so much for watching uh i appreciate you and little miss frida appreciates you this is a quick look at our uh redwood cones um day one million no not really it's only been a couple of weeks but they're going to take a minute to do something as i say every time i show you these and they're not doing something uh no i'm not going to take the responsibility if they don't sprout uh that's not on me but yeah, come on, let's do something. The meter's running. So thank you so much for watching. We will be back for our Thursday drop. And, um, and yeah, thanks so much for watching.